Hello, this is Bunting, and today I'm going to be covering three different styles of drum and bass using Vital and Ableton. Let's go. Hope you enjoyed that, right? Quick note, there is a free drum and bass sample pack. It's just a bunch of recycled samples. I don't know where I got them from, but it's almost one gigabyte worth, so go cop that, right? But the first thing I'm gonna be covering is this rollers kind of bass genre, since it's the most complicated probably, very sound design heavy, and all that jazz, right? So right away, this first sound here. So you see, in rollers, you kind of have three styles of sounds, it seems. They're all just variations on that. You have this kind of horn sound, or some variation on it. Some type of re sound. Like, real movement-y and stuff. Then you have these kind of FM sounds, right? Oops. You know, they all have their distinct tonality. They're just processed in different ways. But really, like, pay attention to rollers, you'll see. It tends to be these three sounds, just variations, right? Anyways... Talking aside, how do you make this horn sound? Okay, first of all, the majority of my viewers are not subscribed. Got your ass, but if you want to subscribe and you watch my videos and enjoy them, that would support me more than you would ever know, and that's awesome, right? So right away, as you see, I have a little dedicated sub there, which I'll over. But the first thing for this kind of sound, in a lot of rollers, either distorted sine waves or square waves, tend to be the base of whatever you want to work with, right? But here's a secret. Distorted sine waves basically are square waves, right? They're just a little different, okay? It's a little different. So really, just basic square wave, and that's it. And all the effects is where the magic happens. First things first, I always like turning on this multiband compressor. Just makes stuff brighter and more epic, right? So I'm thinking, okay, I want this kind of horn sound. All you really need is reverb. You can get away with that, but we're not settling, okay? So let's add a bit of movement. Let's add this low pass filter, right? Okay, and you move this. That's movement. I don't want it to squelch you though. That gets a little too funky for a drum and bass. But that sounds good to me. You can either draw on some automation in Ableton if you want, but for the sake of ease, I'm just gonna drag this LFO here. That's really all you need. Solid, right? Except, you notice a lot of these drum and bass sounds, they have this kind of hollow timbre, which sounds awesome. There's a way to do it in Ableton, but for you non-Ableton guys, I'll show you an alternative, right? So this phaser, phaser kind of just has peaks and frequencies and also little dips, right? Which you see moving around, except stop moving around, stay still, just drag that down and it's frozen. Also, it's stereo with this offset, so I just want it mono. And that's already freaking sick, right? But turn it down to wherever you want you with the center knob and... and that's freaking fat. How about a bit of distortion after that so it blends into the sound a bit more? See? See how big a difference that makes? That's freaking awesome. And of course, you're allowed to try different reverbs, mess with the reverb settings, do all that cool stuff, and there's your horn sound. Right. Awesome. So the next thing is this Reese, right? A little CPU heavy, but put you put up with it. Okay, okay so turning off this OTT, as you can tell, OTT makes things beautiful and bright. So what's going on in this? You'll see another square wave, right? This is different. Usually I'm working with sine waves and all that jazz, but this is square waves. So let's start right off. So square waves make great bases for anything rollers, right? But how do we make it all movementy and crazy and reesey, right? Like neuro, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And that's this unison right here. Just listen. That's already a sound you probably recognize, right? But we want it more interesting. So you can mess with this detune, make it more or less detuned, you know, change the pitch of all these other voices. 
mess with the amount of voices too and all that. Right? But where's the movement come in, okay? One way to add movement to these Reese's, which you definitely want, is pitch bending, right? See, I drew in a bit of pitch bending, except it's barely anything at this point. That's because you need to turn up this bend knob. So right now it's only bending two semitones using this wheel, but we want 12, the full octave. Now it's going crazy. You hear that? Nice. Okay, but we need more movement, okay? We're here for the movement, nothing else. And that's where notch filters come in. Notch filters are awesome for Reese type stuff. So I'm just going to select, you can select any of these, but I'm just going to hit this one. Anything notch or N has a notch in it, right? And it says BPN, okay? But let's drag this to the middle. You see it's a band, B, it's a peak, P, and then N, notch. That's what we want, okay? You hear how sick that sounds? So simple, but so sick, right? Or healthy, you know? It's not GMO. But you can draw that in, of course, with anything. But for the sake of ease, I'm just going to do a cool little LFO shape and be on my way. Let's drag that to this. Backwards. And also, let's put it on sync. Because as you see, every new note, it re-triggers. But I want it to be all smooth, not jumping around, going crazy. And also, please show up. Another quick thing before we head into the effects is I want this to glide smoothly between notes, right? So you have your glide here, right? Which is cool. That does it a bit, but if the voice is only one, that means any new note that's triggered, it's going to automatically glide to and not play forward. Which gives you cleaner glides and all that jazz. It's lovely. Okay. Now for these crazy effects, multiband compressor, attack release up, makes it bright and big and amazing. Okay. So more movement, let's just add another notch, right? This EQ, you can just click this little thing here and boom, another notch. Let's just automate it with this cool LFO and go crazy. And we're, we're in business, right? Okay, another way you can do this stuff is you don't just need to use notch filters. You can use band, high pass, you know, low pass in this case. Let's turn down the resonance. And as you can see, I just drew in some automation. Gives it hella dynamic range, you know, and it's just, I love it. You can add a bit of distortion to that. And of course, after all of that, let's throw in a bit of OTT. Makes it real bright and crispy. And because this is rollers, just reverb everything, man. Reverb your sub, everything. No. You probably shouldn't reverb your sub, and you should cut this out, but reverb sounds good in rollers, and it's used quite commonly, but don't overdo it, okay? So now for these cool FM flux and wubs, right? What's this, okay? It's a classic, okay? I mean, I had a little peek, just make it a little bit fatter, but let's go in here and see what's going on. The classic sine wave shit, okay? So I'm just going to start off with nothing, right, to show you how you can manifest this from nothing yourself. So cool. Basic ass sine wave, right? But where's the crisp, okay? Let's slow down. The crisp is coming with this FM. Just select FM oscillator 2. Okay, but there's still nothing. That's because you need oscillator 2 on. And you need to level down because we only want to hear this first one. And let's turn the pitch up, holding shift. <laughs> You have so many options with this FM. You can try different wavetables, but for this, I want to keep it clean just using sine wave. Okay, now for this cool triplet pluck, right? You can shape the envelope to also shape the volume, but for the sake of just ease so it repeats, I'm just going to shape a little pluck. How about like this? And how about I make it triplet? And except it's not even moving because we need to throw it on volume. Okay. And a little faster. Sounds good to me. And you can mess with the position. And even mess with the pitch here. And of course change the shape. Plenty of plenty of variations for you to use. And that's awesome, right? But where's the crunch come in? 
Okay, slow down. It's distortion. It's always distortion. But now it's a little too blown out for my taste. Even with this multi band. It sounds a little better, but the filter has come to save the day. I don't want it so squelchy, so let's turn on the resonance. Makes it a little cleaner, maybe a bit less distortion, so you can hear a bit more of the harmonics. And of course, throw on that reverb. You know, and just messing with these parameters slightly can get you very, very different results. And maybe you don't want to pluck, you just want to wub. All you got to do is reshape this LFO. It's a whole new sound right there. But I just like the pluck. Okay, so onto the second FM sound. Like I just demonstrated, this wub, right? It's a very similar method to achieve this, just a bit different shaping, right? So literally, it's pretty much the same, just literally with the wub. I have the volume automation, FM, it's the same pitches up, two octaves, right? Except this phaser comes in for that awesome hollow sound, right? So just turn on that phaser, offset down, freeze it, mess with the set. Just gives it that awesome, hollow, metallic, resonant sound, okay? Okay, but before I go any further, I mentioned there's another way to achieve this using Ableton, right? This hollow metallic thing, and that's corpus. Corpus literally simulates resonating through a metallic object, or not just metallic, but through an object. So this is through a beam. You can resonate it through a marimba, a string, a membrane, plate, pipe, tube. Turn down your... See that effect? It's freaking awesome. I like membrane. Really just mess with the tune and different settings on this. You hear? It really gives it a metallic effect, which is sick, right? You can use that on top of the phaser, just with or without the phaser, and mess with it. It's hella underrated for just any kind of sound design, honestly. Okay, so I probably should have covered this first, but anyways, the drums, this is just a basic pattern. Boom, cat, boom, cat. Snare from my new sample pack coming out soon, okay, soon. But for the top end, I really just recommend a top loop, you know, because getting that kind of acoustic breaks feel it's very hard to get just programming MIDI, and why waste all that time when there's plenty of beautiful top loops for you to use? There's also quite a bit, this is from Kashmir, there's quite a bit in the drum and bass sample pack I put up on my website, right? Okay, so the next thing, which isn't as com complicated, and next thing which is even less, is liquid, then jungle. <laughs> Liquid is very atmospheric, very melodic, and very cool, right? As you see, it's pretty much the same drum pattern, except I layered an actual break on it. This is the think break, it's in the sample pack. You know, in drum and bass, there's a lot of sampled stuff, you know? Here I have a different break, there's tons of breaks to use in the pack, but, you know, just layer it with a kick. It's nice to layer it with a kick because a lot of these breaks have pretty weak kicks. You can even layer it with a snare too, but just having that loose kind of vibey, fast paced breaks feel is just unparalleled. So that's the drums, right? So the first thing I did is I wrote out a melody, except it's probably best for you to write out a bass line first if I'm being honest, right? So this Reese is super iconic for drum and bass. It's kind of similar to the other one I showed you, except a little cleaner, a little simpler. And it's super common in liquid, especially. Essentially, it's just saw waves detuned, right, with a low pass. So let's make this from scratch so you see exactly how it's done. Okay, first of all, just draw your bass line. Just, just hear it out in your head. That's what I would recommend you to do always. That's what I do all the time. That's what most producers do. But I'm just pitching this down so it's to the bass frequency, right? And let's just introduce some detune voices. And let's introduce another octave, holding shift. Mess with detune. But it's a little rough on the ears, but that's where the low pass comes in, makes it a super vibey bass. You can mess with the cutoff. You can even add movement to it. 
do all sorts of stuff. You can compress it before. Make it a little sparklier or less. And as you see in liquid, or as you should know, just the melodic and harmonic stuff is super important. So get a solid bass line, like chord progression outlined, and just make a beautiful melody. Thing is, in liquid, you can use a lot of like real kind of instruments. For this, you hear piano in a lot of them. I turn down, turn down the hardness all the way, right? And I went in here and I lowered the velocity on these because if the velocity is high, it doesn't sound as smooth and mellow. So yeah, there's plenty of free VSTs and paid ones for these kind of sampled instruments, but really go crazy. Add any real instrument you want. I just go with piano because it's the old reliable. But you want an atmospheric, right? Not just so dry and drier than a saltine. So I just throw on echo, right? Ableton's echo. It's pretty much just delay, right? Just a little funky. Turn down the dry and wet to like 30 maybe. And throw on some reverb with high decay time. And together... Super emotional. Like if you cried and comment and subscribe. Do all that. Okay, whatever. But just for another layer, I was like, all right, let's add something, okay? So I just wrote chords based on this, the bass line. Just look up like the chords and the key and all that jazz, but, and I arpeggiated it, just threw on Ableton's arpeggiator, like so, right? Without it, it sounds like just playing one note, but now it's playing a bunch of notes and you can change the rate, make it slower, faster. For this patch, this is just a sine wave, basic shape sine wave, right? I turn up the attack and lower the decay and sustain. But when you turn up the attack, it makes it almost flute-like, which is pretty and lovely, okay? So, and also in here, I drew in these little bumps here. So, as you can hear, when I draw this, it makes it a little brighter and a little fuller sound, which is a little better, a little more flute-like, a little more cool. Of course, threw on some reverb. And I just threw on grain delay, like mess with this shit until it makes it sparkly and cool. This is a completely optional, last minute thing. Beautiful, amazing, okay. Now for the vocal. A lot of Liquid has vocals. I was literally just digging through. I looked up vocal, dug through all my samples. For vocals, you can just get them from acapellas and stuff. I just scrolled through until I found that lovely female one I liked. By default, it was like, it was like this. And I pitched it down with the sample thing. And then I just looped this part. Threw an echo on it so it's super atmospheric to match the rest. And it's beautiful. Now, I think this one slapped the hardest, honestly. But this is jungle. Dick, 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 dick. And jungle, you're gonna find the best way to get a jungle sound is just screw MIDI, screw everything except maybe some kicks. Just get a little break, maybe not even the kicks, you know, because you want that old school vintage whatever sound. Get a nice break. Also, 165 BPM for all this stuff. Should have said that. Haha, <laughs> whoops. And just drag in samples, right? I've literally, there's a jungle sample pack in that thing, and it has hella nice stuff. Like, this is probably one of my favorite packs ever. Literally just this folder in here, because there's just so much lovely stuff. Just throw down a random sample like this. You know, throw down another vocal, kind of vocal sample. And the bass. The bass is super important. Plenty of nice basses in here, but how did I process this bass? I mean, you d it doesn't really need processing, because listen. Well, it definitely adds a bit. I just added saturator with sinoid fold, a bit of drive, and a bit of bass. As you can tell, it kind of adds harmonics, except I want it not getting so high, so I just turn on the bass. Keeps the harmonics on the lower side. Makes it fatter. But anyways, just get one of these cool basses. This one was super clean, so I just went in and pitched it to a little pattern and made it kind of hit like an 808, just dragging this fade back. Pressing A to switch between automation and fades, by the way. And I just pitched it around. 
you know, and just pitching it, all that jazz, kind of syncing it up with the kick, because that's pretty important if you want it to us. You know, and then you get pattern. Really just sub plus cool samples and get a break, and that's pretty much jungle for you. you know? Probably the simplest of the bunch, but honestly, maybe the most fun, because it's just so fun dragging samples, because so much stuff there. Like, I can just make a whole new thing right here just by, like, getting just a new riff or something. That's cool. So fun. And you could pitch them around, too. that jazz layer more layer less and that's about it you know so yeah that's drum and bass it's like a pole i'm gonna be posting more polls and stuff and all that jazz i keep saying all that jazz but you know me i'm running out of fillers to say but anyways go to my website i you can get a lesson from me i have samples i have all types of stuff right and that's wonderful right i also have a patreon you can get this project file these presets and more like pretty much every video I have, I have that stuff all in there for you to get and manipulate and learn from, of course, right? And of course, goes without saying, please like the video, that helps me out, helps everyone out, it's free, it's easy. And comment any questions or suggestions, and subscribe if you liked, you know? Please, please, that'd be awesome. But anyways, it's your boy Bunting. If you want to join the Discord, there's also a Discord. I'm tired of saying all the stuff at the end of the videos. Really just read the description. You'll find a bunch of goodies. You'll find Discord. You'll find free stuff. You'll find everything you can ever want and more. But that's drum and bass for you. This is Bunting. Thanks for tuning in and peace out.